Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to vote in the poll and like and subscribe for a legal build next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Matthew Murdock, the man without fear, Daredevil himself. Before we get started, there are no ranger levels in here. Turns out hallways aren't an option for favored terrain. And uh, I will hallway fight you. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to fight without sight. And if you're including people with disabilities in your games and you're not a person with disabilities yourself, be as empathic as possible, research preferred verbiage, and don't make them stereotypes. Remember, they're a person first, just like all your other good NPCs. Next, we need Matt's super senses, which translates into more skills than you can shake a secretly bladed stick at. Finally, we'll make sure that we're extremely quick, able to move where we want and get there without getting injured. For stats, we're using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, but make sure your dexterity and wisdom modifiers are crisp. Wisdom is number one. Your perception and insight scores need to be maxed out. Dexterity after that, you can sneak around in a bright red or yellow suit. That's some serious stealth skill. Constitution next. Matt solves a good number of his issues by getting punched a lot. Follow that up with intelligence. Law school isn't easy, and you remember all your Bible verses. Charisma should be higher, mastered our dump stat strength, but we just need other things more. Remember, if you're going to argue in the comments that I placed the stats wrong, you need to tell me what you would switch out. Otherwise, you're just trying to build a busted character, and that's no fun for everyone else in the party if you fill every role. Matt is a Catholic, and like I said last week, most Catholics are humans. Varian humans are more fun, so let's go with that. If you don't like Varian humans, halflings can re-roll natural ones and have advantage on saves against being frightened, which would be very in line with the man without fear. Also, I like the idea of a halfling balancing their bloodlust with a martyr complex. That's something I'd love to hear about. Anyway, as a variant human, you get a feat. The alert feat adds five to your initiative. You can't be surprised while you're awake, and other creatures don't get advantage on attack rolls against you just because you can't see them. Round up your wisdom and your constitution with your two free points, take survival as your skill of choice for better tracking abilities, and the acolyte background to give you insight and religion proficiency, but only if you put down your Game Boy during the sermon. Fair warning, if you don't like multi-classing, now's the time to click away. We're gonna start off with a rogue because we need so many skills to make this build accurate, and rogues start off with four. Perception, athletics, acrobatics, and stealth are absolute musts. You can grab expertise for double proficiency in two skills. Perception and insight would be great for your night job and your day job. You also get sneak attack, letting you add a d6 to the damage of an attack when you have advantage on the roll or an ally within five feet as long as you're using a finesse or ranged weapon. Now your clubs are probably quarterstaffs, but those bladed doohickeys you've got could easily be called daggers or even short swords if your DM is feeling generous. And if your DM isn't comfortable into reflavoring things without something in the rules as written, don't worry, we're actually fixing that in a couple levels. But first we need to fight in the dark, so we're going to multi-class right away. First level fighters can choose a fighting style and the blind fighting fighting style from the new class feature variants on Earth Arcana means that you don't have disadvantage on hitting a creature because you can't see them. Pairing this with the alert feat removes all the penalties from the blinded condition and means darkness, even magical darkness, isn't an issue for you. Even spells like blur can be ignored because optical illusions aren't super effective against people who are blind. You get second wind letting you recover HP equal to 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. Matt stays up all night after being a lawyer all day. That's what I call stamina. Is the multi-classing over now? No, it's not. First level monks get unarmored defense making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier while you're not wearing armor. Your red suit would probably be leather or studded armor, but the black outfit is basically just street clothes. While unarmored, you get the benefit of martial arts, letting you use monk weapons, which are any simple melee weapons that don't have the heavy or two-handed property, so a quarter staff would qualify. Dealing 1d6 one-handed or 1d8 two-handed, and it uses your dexterity modifier now that it's a monk weapon. This unfortunately doesn't make it a finesse weapon, even though that's the definition of the finesse property. In my home games, I allow monk weapons to use sneak attack for rogue, but if your DM isn't cool with it, that's their call. While using a monk weapon, you also get to make an unarmed attack as a bonus action when you make an unarmed attack or a monk weapon attack as your action, and your unarmed strikes use your dexterity instead of your strength, which is why we were able to dump it. Now we need the powers of a devil, so a quick level of warlock. I'm kidding, we're not doing that. But we will go back to rogue now. Second level rogues get cunning action, letting you dash, disengage, hide, or aim as a bonus action. That aim option was added in that fancy class feature variants unearth arcana and lets you give yourself advantage on an attack as a bonus action as long as you haven't moved in that round. This will give you your sneak attack, which is very nice. But remember that's unearth arcana, so get your DM's permission before using it. Really, you've got a lot of stuff to run by your DM for this one. I really don't think that this character is overpowered, and playtesting stuff is helpful for the people who make these games. So DMs, 
maybe let the UA play. Third level rogues can choose a roguish archetype, and Matt isn't a thief, but the D&D version of a thief doesn't really have to steal stuff. You get fast hands, which lets you use your thieves tools to disarm a trap, pick a lock, or use an object as a bonus action. Pretty useful, and you've got the reaction time. But the real daredevil ability here is second story work, which lets you climb without spending any extra movement, and add your dexterity modifier to your running long jump, helping you move around rooftops. Your sneak attack damage also increases to 2d6. Fourth level rogues get an ability score improvement, or they would if we didn't need another feat. The skilled feat is pretty simple. It lets you scoop up three more skills. Investigation, medicine, and persuasion were missing from this build. You're great at finding clues, stitching yourself up, and winning the case. Your super high insight modifier paired with that persuasion proficiency will make it great at doing interrogations. Just a heads up. Now we're jumping back to fighter. I'm really trying to get the most important things as quickly as possible, and the next most important thing to me is improving our stats. Fighters do that much faster than any other class, but on the way there, we'll get action surge, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest for some extra hits or to run away if that's something you need to do. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype and Daredevil is great at finding weak points on his enemies, so I'm going with Champion. This gives you improved critical, letting you land a critical hit when you roll a 19 or a 20, doubling your chance to deal massive damage with your sneak attacks. Remember, a critical sneak attack doubles all those damage die. Mixing Champion with Rogues is really fun. Fourth level fighters get an ability score improvement. Dexterity will help your accuracy and your AC, but more importantly, your damage modifier for consistent damage every turn. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks instead of one with your action, and still make your bonus action attack with martial arts. This is why the modifier is so important, it's attached to every single attack. Keep in mind your sneak attack can only be used once per round, but you can decide which attack to add it to as long as they all meet the sneak attack requirements. So hold out for a crit, you've got a 10% chance to land one. Sixth level fighters get an ability score improvement, more dexterity would be good. It really hasn't been that long since I talked about why, hopefully you can remember that from 30 seconds ago. Seventh level champions get remarkable athlete, letting you add half your proficiency to any strength, dexterity, or constitution check you don't have proficiency with. And you can add your strength modifier to the distance of a running long jump, but uh, don't. Your strength modifier is negative. Whoops. 8th level fighters get an ability score improvement, and you could raise your strength modifier, but we need maximum perception and insight, so invest in wisdom. It'll also bump your AC, which is pretty great. Matt's great at avoiding attacks. Speaking of avoiding attacks, let's finish off our rogue levels now, starting with the 5th level of rogue for uncanny dodge, letting you reduce damage from an attack by half to fight even longer. Your sneak attack damage also increases to 3d6. 6th level rogues get expertise and 2 more skills, acrobatics will make you as nimble as possible, and athletics will mitigate your low strength score by doubling the proficiency with athletics. I kind of like how this works. When you're prepared to lift, you can do it, but for strength saves, you're going to get knocked around. Pretty accurate. You're not really a heavy guy. Seventh level rogues get evasion, meaning you take no damage on successful deck saves and half damage from successful ones. With how heightened your senses are, you can smell the wick burning down, giving you more time to dive out of the way. Your sneak attack damage also increases to 4d6, which means 8d6 when you get a crit. We'll round this off with some more levels of fighter. Hopefully nobody is getting whiplash from going back and forth, but I swear this is the last time. Ninth level fighters get indomitable, letting you re-roll a failed saving throw once per long rest. Your best stats are dexterity and wisdom, which I'd say are some of the most common saves in the game. You're a really tough dude. Tenth level champions can learn Learn another fighting style. Two weapon fighting would be cool, but you basically already got that with martial arts, so instead go for dueling to add two to the damage of a weapon you're holding one handed with nothing in your other hand. Use the other hand for punching, obviously. 11th level fighters get another extra attack. For three attacks per round with your action, an unarmed attack is your bonus action with bonus critical chances on all of those, which is always fun. Our capstone is the 12th level fighter for an ability score improvement, and if we were power building, we'd cap our dexterity, but we're not because I don't care about doing that, so cap your wisdom for incredibly high perception and insight checks. Let's talk about some other options I didn't use for this build. I'm guessing a lot of you expected more monk levels, but I didn't use them because there's so much to double up with rogue and fighter skills. So what would I want from monk? Mobility options are covered well with the rogue levels and don't require key points. Same with evasion, with rogues getting uncanny dodge as well. The big miss is stillness of mind from the seventh level, which lets you remove an effect of frightening, but frightening saves are tied to wisdom, which we've already maxed out. If we took levels out of rogue, we'd be missing expertise, which is very important to get that extra level of perception. Taking levels out of fighter would would cut our ability score improvements, and Matt obviously needs to have very high stats to feel right. Finally, a couple of feats we didn't grab. Observant would add 5 to your passive perception, but your passive perception is already 27, which is insanely good. And the tough feat would give us some extra HP, but we're invested pretty well into constitution and mostly took fighter levels, so our health was pretty good. So how did this build turn out? 
Well, you've got a ton of skills, which makes you very versatile for roleplay, especially interrogations, thanks to that bonkers insight score and solid persuasion skill as well. You're also incredibly perceptive, with ridiculously high passive perception making you hard to hide from, and invisibility is not an issue for you. Finally, you get four attacks per round. Three of them have the potential to add sneak attack damage, and all of them have a double chance to crit, which can help you deal some serious damage. For weaknesses, you have no magical damage, so higher level enemies could resist your very human punches. You're also susceptible to strength and charisma saves, meaning you could be pushed around, even to other planes. Hell's Kitchen is rough, but the Nine Hells are even rougher. Finally, there's just a lot of DM permission you're going to need to get the most out of this build. I don't think they're big asks, but again... I'm probably not your DM. If it helps sell the idea, let them know that a martyr complex is a big part of the character. Utilize your skills in and out of combat, get some big hits off, and don't be afraid to take some punishment. But if your DM knows who you based your character off of, they'll probably know your own guilt is the best way to punish you, so hopefully the rest of your party is as tough as you are. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe for more. We make two builds every week. If you like Marvel, you might also like DC. So vote in the poll for Green Arrow, Green Lantern, or Black Canary. And come back Thursday for a big little brother.